Welcome to section 3 where we're going to be looking at the grid view layout. In this video, we're going to be creating a new Xcode project and then introduce the collection view object. The first thing that we want to do is to create a new Xcode project. So launch Xcode and then select to create a new project. Under the Mac OS tab, make sure you have the Cocoa app selected. Then click on Next. And then you want to provide the name for the app. I'm going to be calling this app the Grid View App. Make sure that you have only the Use Storyboard option selected here and then the language is Swift. Click on the Next button and then click on the Create button. Once you have the project successfully created, you want to go to the main storyboard. And here we're going to have the three scenes that we have in the previous project, which is the application scene, the window controller scene, and the view controller scene. We're not going to be deleting any of the scene in this project. We're going to be using the view controller. So what you want to do is want to go to the objects library, click on the objects library at the top here, and then you want to search for collection view. The one that we need is the one that says collection view which displays an array of contents as a grid of views. You can see a graphical representation of how the objects are displayed inside of the collection view as grid. So drag the collection view on top of the view controller. So align the top and the left edge. And what we want to do is because we want it to cover the entire view. So I'm going to adjust the size so that we can have all the four sides aligned with the view controller edges. You can see that all of the edges are now aligned. So what I'm going to do now is to add a layout constraint. So go to the add new constraint option at the bottom here, click on it. You want to make sure that all the values are set to zero. And then you want to pin the top, the leading, the trailing and the bottom. Then click on add for constraints. So now we have the constraints added to the collection view. There are some options that we're going to be setting on the collection view. We want to make sure that we have the collection view selected. If you look at the document outline, you can see that just like the table view in the section one of the course, you can see that here we have the bordered scroll view. We actually have the scroll view being selected and not the collection view. We want to expand the clip view here and inside of the clip view, that's where we have the collection view. Make sure that you have the collection view selected. Then go to the attribute inspector. The first thing that we want to change is the item size. I'm going to show you what this does in the future. This item size represents how big the grid is going to be. So for now, I want you to set this to 250 by 250. The layout is currently set to flow layout. The flow layout, I'm going to show you what that means as well. It just means that when you resize your collection view, then the grids are also going to be rearranged which is the default. So leave the default as it is. And then we're going to set the section inset. The section inset represents like a padding or margin around the grid. So that means if you want each grid to have a space towards the top, then you're going to set the top. So if you put 10 points there, that means the grid is going to be 10 points from the top. I'm going to set it for the left as well. So that means there's going to be 10 point distance between each of the grid. I'm going to set it for the bottom, which means that the bottom of one grid is also going to be 10 points from the top of the grid that is below it, 10 points for the right as well. So make sure that for the section inset, you have the 10 set for the left, top, bottom, and right. Another option that we're going to be setting for the collection view is the selectable. Because I want the grid to be selectable, so I'm going to select that option. So these are the options that you have to set for the collection view, the item size, the section inset, and then make sure that it is selectable. The next thing that we want to do is to create an outlet for the collection view. So go to the assistant editor, click on the assistant editor here, and then we want to create an IB outlet for the collection view. Because it's very hard to drag from the interface builder, I'm going to control drag from the document outline here on top of the viewed did load function. So let's give it a name and we're going to be calling it collection view and then click on the connect. So we have the high B outlet set up. The way the collection view works is very similar to the way the table view works. Even though there are some major differences, 
table view simply display your items in rows while the collection view displays your items in grid. This is why what we're doing now is similar to what we did in the previous video because there are similarities between how these two objects work. What we need to do now is to set the view controller class as the delegate and the data source for the collection view, just as we did previously. So what you need to do is to drag from the collection view to the view controller class at the top here and then drop it. And then you can select the data source and then do the same thing again. Control drag from the collection view to the view controller class. And then you want to select the delegate. So now that means we've set the view controller class to be the delegate and the data source for the collection view. So this is all we have to do in this video. Create a new Xcode project and then drag the collection view to the view controller. Make sure that you change some properties of the collection view. Create an IB outlet for the collection view and then set the data source and the delegate object is similar to what we did in the preview.